Hi, I'm Sue Kropbauer, and I'm passionate about helping mid-life, mid-career, 30 to 50-somethings that feel, well, stuck and don't know exactly why they can't get moving again. I'm a digital equity champion, a connector, an advisor, an entrepreneur, and a mentor for midlifers. And my weekly live streams are intended to help you successfully navigate the challenges of midlife transition and just possibly motivate you to embrace these changes rather than leave you feeling stuck. Last week, we tackled saboteur syndrome head-on. We touched on some of the contributing factors to feeling like an imposter and and identified some self-sabotaging patterns that you might not even be aware of. I also offered a special on my ebook, Saboteur Syndrome, What It Is and How to Overcome It. If you missed this last session, you can check it out by going over to my Facebook business page and watching the replay. So... The past few weeks, we've been hitting pretty hard on the concept of being stuck, mired down, frozen, and in a perpetual state of meh. If this theme has resonated with you because you feel like you're not making any progress in your life or your work or your business right now, you might want to pivot this week. I'm going to chat with you a bit about the intrinsic value of the neutral zone. This week, we're going to talk about how being in the midst of active change and transition isn't always where you ought to be or are meant to be. Sometimes, there's great value in being stuck in that neutral zone. But before we get started, here's a nugget I want you to consider as we move through our time together. Change is trans- is situational. Transition is psychological. Let me repeat that, sort of muffed it up there. Change is situational. Transition is psychological. The pandemic has accelerated many of our transitions, both personally and professionally at work and at home. I hear from many of my clients that they feel disoriented and disconnected and, well, sometimes downright depressed. It is no surprise that as the changes have been immense and the impact of this isolation and uncertainty is, is, well, frankly, underestimated. What is interesting to me is that some of the feelings of being that we are experiencing are are about endings, things we've lost, and the realization that, well, some things are just never, ever going to be the same. Furthermore, the enforced Time out. We've endured during the pandemic has given us space to think about what we really want from life and where, well, it might have accelerated your own personal transition. Now, I can't take credit for this concept. It's based on the precepts from William Bridges' long-standing book, Transitions, Making Sense of Life Changes. Oh, it's an oldie but goodie, a true eye-opener. And if you're looking for a great read about how to work through difficult or confusing life changes, I highly recommend it. But back to the topic at hand. William Bridges explains it like this. Transition is about letting go of the past and taking up new behaviors or new ways of thinking. Planned change is about physically moving offices or locations or restructuring your life. Transition lags behind planned change because it's more complex and harder to achieve. Change is situational situational and can be planned where transition, as we said, was psychological and is much less easy to manage. Change happens fast, and often people have no say in the matter. But transition is a slower process that happens internally. Transition is what goes on inside people's minds as they go through a change process. The three stages of transition that Bridges identifies are ending, the neutral zone, and a new beginning. 
It's important to remember that everyone goes through this process at their own speed. I mean, some people will be receptive to change and go through all three stages really quickly. And others are a little more set in their ways. And getting through the first two stages are going to take them just a little bit longer. Change. It is meant to be positive. Your intention for change is to make things better and easier and to fast track your route to success. Why, why then do we experience so much internal resistance to change? The ending zone. When people first learn that a situation that they understood and were comfortable with is about to be replaced with something new, they experience an emotional, a visceral reaction. If we fail to understand and acknowledge that, you may well resist change all the way through that entire change process. The neutral zone. When people enter the neutral zone, they are not only yet, they're not quite yet comfortable with change and will still need a lot of encouragement and positive reinforcement about the change. But by now, in this stage of the process, change is inevitable. It's taken place and people are getting used to new ways of doing things. The learning curve is a stressful one and you're not yet at home with the new way that things are working. So, you might look back at the way things used to be and may secretly or openly feel that it was pleasanter or better. I call it the glory day syndrome. <laughs> Everything's a syndrome with Sue, isn't it? But the, you've heard the, the Bruce Springsteen song, Glory Days, right? Anyway, at the same time, you're in a process of adapting to the change that you're implementing. But here's the key takeaway for today. The neutral zone is the heart of the transition. Well, like when a seed is underground waiting to germinate, there really doesn't seem to be much going on, but it's a very fertile and important time. This is where questioning and growth and learning and formation and courage and creativity and lots of risk taking happens. So, I'm getting a little bit long-winded here today, so I'm going to continue this concept of the neutral zone and moving, and we'll tackle moving into, um, moving into the new zone next week. And I'm also, next week I'll share with you 10 ways you can make the most out of your own personal neutral zone. But for now, I'll leave you to your weekend and enjoy your next week, and we'll see you next Friday when we talk about the end zone. <laughs>